धारावाहिक आलोचन आज के विषय आलोचना करबेंसियल हाइपार टेंशन इटिओलजी पैथोजेंोसिस कम्प्लीकेशन एंड ट्रिटमेंट ट्रिटमेंटे बहुत ट्रिटमेंट नहीं आलोचना है कन्भेंशनल प्लस होमिओपैथिक दर्शक आलोचनागुलो के दुई भागे विभक्त करंगरेजी भाषण और बांगला भाषण तो प्रथम आलोचना कर इंगलिस भाषण आज के द्वित पार्टे आलोचना करब हाइपार टेंशन एवं आज के चेष्टा करब ये पार्टे शेष करार्ज दर्शक अपन ज्ञातार्थे जाना जो अपनारा आलोचनार शेषर अंशे जदि आलोच्य विषय प्रश्न था चाहले अपनारा बांगला भाषा प्रश्न करते जरा इंगलिस प्रश्न करब मोस्ट ओलकाम अपना प्रश्नगुल आंसार कर इंगरेजी तो भूमिकाय कथा ना बाड़िए सरसि आलोचन चले जो चाहिए आलोचन आमंत्रण जामिपैथिक परिषद सम्मानित सभापति डर शेख फारूक सर के सर अत्यंत कष्ट प्रेजेंटेशन गो के रेडी करें शत व्यस्तार मध्य नियमित समय दीजें ये सकल अनुरोध थकबे अपनारा आलोचना शुरार समय को भूल बसत असतर्कता बसत जान अपना माइक टी आनमिउट ना हो जाए कैमरा टी बंद रखबें और अने कैमरा आलोचना we are going to <coughs> present the second part or the last part of <coughs> hypertension <coughs> so i welcome all the viewers uh homeopathic doctors students maybe teachers and those who love homeopathy all of you good evening adab Assalamu alaikum. Uh, let me little bit recapitulate the first lecture before going to the second part, so that if anybody uh, present today, maybe he was not present in the last lecture, so he may follow uh, it a little bit. We said the definition of hypertension. and we gave some uh 
measurements of blood pressure normal high normal and we graded it into three part grade one grade two grade three normal blood pressure is systolic 130 and diastolic below 85 and if it is more than 180 uh, systolic and more than 110 diastolic this is called severe hypertension then we discussed little bit about anatomy of heart and blood circulation so today i'm not going to discuss it because i hope most of the doctors here uh, they studied anatomy and they know it little bit this is heart heart has four chamber and you see these are called two atria and two ventricles these are great vessels this is aorta this is pulmonary trunk this is superior vena cava this is inferior vena cava and these are coronary arteries we discussed <clears throat> in previous lectures also uh, about the coronary arteries its anatomy and its pathogenesis <clears throat> we know that this coronary arteries sometimes they get blocked by atherosclerosis and give rise to heart attack. Uh, this is atherosclerosis. This is a normal artery, and you see there is deposition of uh, lipid fat layers inside the artery, and it is blocking the channel of the artery, <coughs> giving rise to uh, <coughs> compromising of the blood supply to the particular organ. <clears throat> and this one we sorry we showed how to uh, make coronary angioplasty or stenting so this is this is atherosclerosis in a coronary vessels and this is the stenting inside there is a balloon this is the balloon after inflating the balloon they remove the balloon afterwards and keep the ring inside so the uh, blocked vessels become dilated and remain as such <coughs> we discussed about etiology of essential hypertension hypertension we said that in conventional medicine in conventional medicine uh, there is no clear-cut etiology or cause of essential hypertension, but there are some factors. These are called genetic factors, fetal factors, environmental factors. They contribute to the production of hypertension. And then we said one is essential hypertension and another is secondary hypertension. Means hypertension due to causes outside blood circulation, due to causes in some other organs like uh, in kidney, if there is chronic kidney disease, glomerular nephritis, it will give rise to uh, hypertension. If there are some endocrine diseases, as so many I, we discussed last day. Correct blood pressure, and you keep the patient sitting for some time to take some rest if it comes to your chamber, and then only you measure the blood pressure. And we have two types of instrument. This is called tonometer, and this is called mercury sphygmomanometer. This is mercury column. So this one is just we say this is better one because it's uh, it's uh, uh, this uh, this parameters remains. Uh, remains in normal position for a long time. But in tonometer, sometimes it gets loose and gives uh, wrong wrong uh, measurement. But this one we use usually 
when we go outside because this is very small and it is very handy and this one we keep in our chamber uh, as a permanent instrument to uh, see blood pressure and also you can measure blood pressure by other electronic devices but you must make sure that your devices are okay there is good battery and good maintenance then it gives correct blood pressure otherwise it may give false reading this is stethoscope we discussed yesterday about it now this is how to measure blood pressure we said we say there is one term called white coat hypertension it means when a, when a doctor measures blood pressure of a normal person maybe he is little bit uh, worried little bit afraid of hospital or, and he gets stressed and his blood pressure is little bit raised so when it is measured by a doctor sometimes it is more than the actual blood pressure but if his blood pressure is measured at home by some other person you may find uh, normal blood pressure that's why it is called white coat hypertension this is a term in conventional medicine now today we will start our second part from here this is first history taking of a hypertension patient we know in homeopathy we take case history as taught by Samuel Hahnemann in Organon aphorism uh, 83 to say 104 and we know it very well now well you take hypertension uh, case history of a hypertension patient you will have to keep your eye on some uh, facts so that you get the correct information first of all we take the family history very well why because uh, blood pressure is sometimes hereditary if father and mother have hypertension your patient may have the hypertension so during the family history you must ask about hypertensive history in his family then his lifestyle is is taking exercise every day or he is only a sedentary person uh, sleeping at home most of the time and he takes salt more or less and he smokes or not because these are all contributing to the production of blood pressure so while we take the history we we ask the patient about this thing uh, directly then also we keep our eye to find some hints about causes of secondary hypertension in that patient how say we know uh, what are the causes of secondary hypertension so while you take the history we ask him about his co he has any coronary artery disease then if he has any uh, say kidney disease if he has any uh, endocrine disease so that we may think that his hypertension is secondary not essential so while we take the history we ask the patient about these factors now while we examine the patient after taking the history i am because i am i told you briefly about history taking not elaborating because we know it well and also the examination part we, we i shall discuss briefly only the important points while examining the patient we must keep in our mind to find any sign of secondary hypertension so we will watch his pulse both in radius and in femoral artery if we find there is delay in femoral artery pulse then the radial pulse you understand the thing while you take the pulse by one hand in the radius one hand in the femoral artery yet they should occur simultaneously at the same time but you find the pulse is coming in the radial artery first and after a little time it goes to the femoral artery so it is called radio femoral delay it indicates coarctation of aorta maybe in the aorta he has constriction and that is the uh, that is the cause of this radio femoral delay and we can say then this hypertension is secondary hypertension then while we examine his abdomen we will try to palpate his kidney area 
and if he has polycystic disease of kidney, you know, this is called polycystic disease of kidney. Whole kidney has many many cysts. This is congenitally, and his kidney become big. And this big kidney actually destroys the kidney tissue, and lead to renal failure, chronic kidney disease, and give rise to essential hypertension, uh, secondary hypertension. So while we examine the abdomen, you keep in your mind to examine the kidney, whether it is normal size or bigger size. Then we try to find out some bruits. Bruits means abnormal artery sound by the stethoscope. So we know there is one renal artery stenosis, which cause secondary hypertension. So on the renal artery place, we put the stethoscope if there is any bruit. So we can we can <clears throat> think that his hypertension is secondary due to renal artery stenosis. If we find something like this here, or we can we can examine him whether he has Cushing syndrome. You know, Cushing syndrome is due to adrenal gland tumor, adrenal uh, cortex hormone hypersecretion makes him a moon phase. So these are all the question and examine the patient. You must keep all these things in your mind. Then also we check about risk factor of hypertension. Like if the person has central obesity, you know obesity, central obesity means, central obesity means his tummy, his abdomen is very big, big one. This is called central obesity. And a person who has central obesity has more chance of hypertensive disease and heart disease. And also we ask for hyperlipidemia. If his cholesterol, and uh, his uh, lipids, triglycerides, these are high or not because these are the cause of hypertension. Then zentel as now, you know, you, you kind of see on the eye, there are some white pigments here. White raised pigments, this indicate this guy has high lipid. You, you can find in some person, they have white pigments, pigmented area here. This is called zentelesma. If you find this thing, you can check his blood lipids, and you may find that his cholesterol and triglycerides are high. Then also, we watch for any complication of hypertension because this patient may have hypertension for a long time, and he has already developed some complication. Like he may have heart hypertrophy, left ventricular hypertrophy, and in that case we may find some abnormal heart sound, some murmur here. Then we will also watch his, or examine his eye to see the optic fundi. Maybe he has retinitis or evidence of atherosclerosis. May, he may have atherosclerosis means the deposition of lipid in arterial wall, which cause hypertension. How you know it, you may find he has peripheral vascular disease. He may say that I have pain in the calf muscle as soon as I walk. When I take rest, there is no pain. When I walk, there is pain. So this is called intermittent claudication, which indicate there is peripheral vascular disease. Or he may have aortic aneurysm, you know. We will we'll show it afterwards. The abdominal aorta may become swollen and about to rupture, burst, and this is a very dangerous thing. So also we look for aortic aneurysm. So these are all while you take the history. Now we come to a very important subject. This is called complications of hypertension or target organ damage. While we studied diabetes mellitus, we discussed about complication of long-term diabetes. We said there are microvascular complications and macrovascular complications in diabetes, I think you remember. But for 
hypertension, there is no micro or macro. Just we classified here, you see. These are the adverse effects or complication of long-term hypertension. When you have long and control hypertension vessels, some effects on the central nervous system, on the brain. Some effects on the retina in the eye. Hypertension targets this organ to damage them. So what happens in blood vessels? Let us discuss. In blood vessels, in, in artery. So we know that in hypertension, there is deposition of lipids inside the vessel wall, inside the arterial wall. And it, it uh, narrows the lumen of the artery. <coughs> so when there are bigger arteries, bigger arteries, they have internal lining of the aorta has lipid deposition. This is called atherosclerosis. And its more smooth muscle also become hypertrophy. <coughs> and ultimately the wall becomes thicker. So when the wall of the vessel is thicker and blood is flowing inside it, so there will be more pressure from the wall. So this will cause hypertension. If the wall of the artery is, is a loose or a little, you can say soft, the pressure will be less. But if the wall is very thick, stiff, so the pressure exerted by the wall to the flowing of the blood will be more. And also, the big artery with atherosclerosis sometimes they make aneurysm. What is aneurysm? This is dilatation of a part of the blood vessels by the pressure of the blood and atherosclerosis. We'll show it after some time. So in bl big blood vessels, atherosclerosis and aneurysm may develop. In smaller arteries, no aneurysm, only atherosclerosis will develop. We discussed last day, what is atherosclerosis? It means deposition of fat materials, lipid materials in the wall of artery, making it thicker and narrower. So this atherosclerosis, if it develops in the heart, there will be block of coronary arteries. If it develops in the brain, there will be a thrombosis or hemorrhage in the, in the brain. Uh, if it develops in the kidney, there will be renal failure. So in the blood vessels, hypertension makes the change and cause damage of the heart and brain and, and kidneys. Now let us discuss a little bit about what is aneurysm. You find, I, I, I have some patients, two patients of aneurysm. I, I show you the thing. Here I show in a nutshell all the complications of hypertension. You see, this is the eye. So in the eye, there will be hypertensive retinopathy. The retina will be damaged. There may be uh, hemorrhage. Then in the heart, heart will be hypertrophied. Heart will uh, go on fail. And in the coronary vessels, there will be deposition of fat and there will be coronary block. In the kidney, you see in the kidney, there will be damage of nephrons causing chronic renal failure. And in the arterial wall, there will be deposition of fat and there will be damage of the artery. Maybe it will make aneurysm. Now, what is aneurysm I show you? You see, this is heart. From heart, this big vessel, this is called aorta. This is the biggest artery. This is called aorta, it comes out from the heart, then making an arch, passing through the chest, then abdomen. This is called descending thoracic aorta. <coughs> this is called <coughs> descending abdominal aorta. 
from abdominal overdrive, you see this is the renal artery. It goes to the kidney. Now, sometimes what happens in this part of the abdominal aorta, by the deposition of ather atherosclerosis in the wall of the artery, its wall becomes weaker and it dilates. It is about to rupture, you see. By chance, if this one, this part of the aorta here, if it ruptures, the patient will die on the, on the spot because oh, all his blood will flow out and fill the abdominal cavity and the patient will die on the spot. This is so dangerous. This is called aneurysm of aorta or aortic aneurysm. Now I tell you one, one, one story in this point. You know Albert Einstein, the inventor of uh, uh, law of relativity. This Albert Einstein and his old age, he was given a proposal to be the president of Israel. He refused. He said, no, I am not a politician. I'm a scientist. So I don't want to go for the post of president of a country. But people say there was actually another another uh, cause for this one. Why? Because Einstein had a big aortic aneurysm. He has a big aortic aneurysm. And that time in 1950s or 1940s, there was no treatment of aortic aneurysm. Once there is aortic aneurysm, they will treat it conservatively, but sometimes if it burst, the patient will die. There was no mechanism how to repair this aortic aneurysm. And, and Einstein was always afraid that maybe suddenly his aortic aneurysm will burst and he will die. And he died. People, people suspect that because there is officially no announcement that Einstein died of rupture of aortic aneurysm. But there is rumor that actually he died of this aortic because he died very suddenly. So you see this is aortic aneurysm. Also nowadays there is treatment of aortic aneurysm and then and, and it, it gets cured. Uh, there is conservative treatment and there is surgical treatment. And also we can treat homeopathically if it is because it has three grades mild moderate and severe if it is more if it is mild and moderate they don't do surgery even in conventional medicine they do con, uh, conservative treatment so we have i i, I have two patients i'm i'm treating this this case one case i'm giving him beta carb and he's he's getting well and you can check it because you can do ultrasonography abdominal ultrasonography and you can measure the diameter of abdominal uh, aorta, and you can check your its progress or its worsening. If you find it was three centimeter, now it is it it got four and a half centimeter, then you must be afraid that it is going to rupture. It is dilating and dilating. But if you find if it was three centimeter, now it is two centimeter, then you must be happy. <laughs> you can say the patient that yes, there is no fear. Is getting uh, relieved. So this is abdominal uh, aortic aneurysm. It develops from hypertension, you see, from atherosclerosis and hypertension. Oh. Okay, then, then we go, this is, so these are all chronic complications of hypertension, this on blood vessels. Now we are going to, second one, central nervous system. What is the complication of hypertension on central nervous system? Central nervous system means brain and spinal cord. So what we find, the patient having hypertension, as we said, he develops atherosclerosis in all the vessels. So also he develops atherosclerosis in carotid vessels. And in the carotid artery, there is atheroma, atherosclerosis. And it's, 
it uh, narrows the blood vessel. And sometimes the blood vessel will rupture. And there will be cerebral hemorrhage. There will be stroke. And sometimes there will be cerebral thrombosis. Now, if you ask me what is cerebral hemorrhage and what is cerebral thrombosis, let me little bit uh, tell you what happens. Oh, hurry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Ah, right, right, right. So you see, this is carotid artery. It is coming from the arch of aorta. This arch of aorta, carotid artery is coming. And there is atherosclerosis here. And this atherosclerosis, sometimes it ruptures. There are small thrombus ruptures from here and it goes to the brain. And this will block a finer cerebral artery. And where it will block, this area will die. And this patient will have stroke. Sometimes these vessels after atherosclerosis become brittle and it ruptures. If it ruptures, there will be hemorrhage in the brain. So this is called cerebral hemorrhage. But if there is thrombosis, there is no, rupture, uh, no hemorrhage. It blocks the artery like, like in the heart, like coronary artery block and there is heart attack. So it is same like this. There will be thrombosis and it, it will block the blood circulation in the brain, and this area will suffer, and the patient will have a stroke. So there may be cerebral hemorrhage and cerebral thrombosis. All are complication of hypertension. You see, this is coronary artery. These are atherosclerosis, deposition of fat inside the artery. So f f from here, one small piece of atheroma can dislodge and go to the brain and cause cerebral thrombosis. Or cerebral artery may rupture, causing cerebral hemorrhage. So if a person has chronic or long-time hypertension and, uh, and uncontrolled, then he may have this fear that he may have uh, cerebral vascular accident. This is called CVA. Before it was called CVA. Nowadays it is called CBD, cerebrovascular disease. Or in colloquial term, we say this is stroke. So this is in the brain. Now, there may not be a stroke, but this is called hypertensive encephalopathy. That only there is high blood pressure, but no thrombosis or hemorrhage. Due to the high pressure, he may have neurological abnormalities. Like he will have transient disturbance of speech. He may have slurring of speech. He may have loss of speech. He may have vision, blurred vision, or disorientation. He will not have orientation. He will say uh, something which are not uh, related to anything. And he may have loss of consciousness. This is called hypertensive encephalopathy. This is more dangerous than the stroke. Because sometimes this one will damage his brain and he may die if he, it is not treated early. So in the central nervous system, we find there are two complications. One is stroke, another is hypertensive encephalopathy. Now let us come to the, let us come to eye. In the eye, it actually attacks the retina, retinal blood vessels. And these retinal blood vessels get ruptured. Sometimes it gets ruptured and there is exudates in the retina or maybe there will be retinal ischemia if there is thrombosis, retinal ischemia. And ultimately, this person will have papilledema and blurring of vision and loss of vision. So a person having hypertension may have loss of vision due to retinitis. Now, complication of the heart. 
So you know, as there is atherosclerosis in the vessels outside, it means the vessels are not soft, became thick. So heart will have more uh, pressure to, uh, to, to send the blood on the periphery. So due to this high pressure or high load, the heart will hypertrophy. This will be enlarged. And it will go on hypertrophy and hypertrophy. And ultimately, this will fail. This is called heart failure. So if there is long-standing hypertension and untreated or inadequately treated, the person will have first cardiac hypertrophy and then cardiac failure. Why hypertrophy, I say? Because the heart will have more force. It must send the blood forcefully to overcome the thick artery outside. That's why a person having high blood pressure, he will have cardiac hypertrophy and heart failure ultimately. And in the kidneys, in the kidneys, this hypertension will cause proteinuria and progressive renal failure and ultimately end stage renal failure. So if a person has diabetes, we studied in diabetes that they damage the kidney and also in hypertension, we find long-standing hypertension damage the kidney and cause chronic kidney disease and ultimately renal failure. So these are all uh, chronic complication of hypertension or we say target organ damage. What are the target organ? This is blood vessels, then heart, then brain, then eye and the kidney. These are the target organ of hypertension. Now there is one term we must know. This is called malignant hypertension. So malignant means not, not cancer, but this malignant means very bad hypertension, very pathogenic hypertension. So there is benign hypertension and malignant hypertension. Benign hypertension means this is moderate hypertension, which can be, which cause no complaint to the patient and which can be controlled easily by medication only. And malignant hypertension, you understand this is malignant, so blood pressure will be very high. So how much? So if we find a person having blood pressure, he should have 120 over 80. This is normal blood pressure. But if you find a person is having 180 systolic and more than 120 diastolic, more than this, not only this one, maybe he may have 240 systolic, 140 diastolic, but this is the lowest range. If any person has more than 180 over 120, we can say he has malignant hypertension. And it is a dangerous thing. And it is an emergency. It is a medical emergency. So if you measure the blood pressure and find a person is having systolic blood pressure more than 180, diastolic pressure more than 120, this is an emergency. I will say you send the patient to emergency department of a hospital. But before sending him, you may give some medicine because this may help him tremendously. So you can take the lead from his symptoms, maybe one dose of belladonna, maybe one dose of glonoin, maybe spizolia will help him too much. By the symptoms, you give a dose and send him soon to the hospital because otherwise he will have end organ damage very soon. And this will be irreversible damage. So this is malignant hypertension. Now we see how can we diagnose that this is malignant hypertension. This is not only by the blood pressure. Of course, blood pressure is one point. If he has this blood pressure, we say he has a sign of malignant hypertension. But he will have other signs also. What are the signs? There will be rapidly progressive end organ damage, like he will have he will have retinopathy. He will, 
he will have blurred vision he will say i cannot see he will have renal dysfunction anuria oliguria he will say i cannot pass urine since maybe 12 hours or he may have hypertension and cephalopathy maybe he will he will he will talk irrelevantly he will may go to semi consciousness or unconsciousness he may have ventricular left ventricular failure and ultimately death so these are the signs of malignant hypertension so you see this is dangerous high blood pressure and if you cannot check it it will go to retinopathy it will kill his uh, kidney it will develop uh, heart failure and hypertension and cephalopathy then ultimately there will be unconscious and then he will die so this is a dangerous thing you don't treat him in your chamber only give a dose and send him to the emergency of a hospital nearby hospital now let us see this is chronic kidney disease we say end organ damage target organ this kidney you see and when there is damage of kidney it occur gradually and they have classified it into five stages stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 and stage 5 this is according to this is called gfr glomerular filtration rate and sinap creatinine if uh normal gfr is from 80 to 120 per minute per per, uh, per ml per uh, per body surface per square feet of body surface 80 to 120 this is normal but if a person develops less than 10 you find he has only 10 or 8 gfr then he is in the stage 5 and he needs dialysis so from stage 1 you may find his gfr is say 75 to 80 stage 2 there in the next class we will discuss about chronic kidney failure there we will discuss elaborately about the staging just now i am giving you some hints stage 2 will have say gfr maybe 50 to 60 stage 3 say 30 to 40 stage 4 say 15 to 20 and stage 5 less than 10 less than 10 means this is irreversible damage of the kidney and this is called end stage renal failure and the guy will need dialysis or transplantation so you find that chronic kidney disease occurs by two major diseases one is diabetes mellitus and hypertension now you find in some person he has both diabetes and hypertension so his chances of kidney damage become double so he must have good treatment and good lifestyle otherwise he will lose his kidney function if somebody has hypertension and diabetes together and you will find many of our patient we find he has diabetes he has hypertension he has hyperlipidemia and he has already some kidney damage and also maybe one heart attack with this picture they come some sometimes so these are all complicated cases and little bit difficult cases to treat uh we already discussed but we can say something about symptoms of malignant hypertension we told already what are the symptoms in malignant hypertension he will find chest pain because it is damaging his heart chest pain decreased urine output it means he will have anuria or little urine only and he will have delirium as i said he will have irrelevant talking delirium he will have severe headache backache mood change his mood will be changed nausea and vomiting he will vomit and shortness of breath dyspnea vision change he will see blurring of vision including blurred vision so if you find a person has blood pressure systolic more than 80 diastolic more than 120 and this in this symptoms 
So you diagnose him as malignant hypertension. And as I said, don't keep him in your uh, chamber long. Just give a dose of most suitable one, what you think, and then send him to hospital emergency. Otherwise, he'll be in problem and he'll be in problem also. So malignant hypertension, what, what he will cause? It will cause aortic dissection, acute heart failure. This will cause malignant hypertension, acute heart failure, acute kidney injury. There will be acute kidney failure, brain damage, as I said, hypertension and cephalopathy. There will be heart attack, hemorrhage in the brain, stroke in the brain, unstable angina and vision loss. So I think you can understand a malignant hypertension is not a not a, an easy thing. It is better to treat a patient so that he does not go to malignant hypertension. Before that, you treat him so that his blood pressure is in normal level or tolerable level. And if you find it is going to malignant hypertension, better you leave it. Leave it and send to the specialist to control his blood pressure. Otherwise, anytime maybe at, at home, he will go to malignant hypertension and he will die. Now, what are the investigations of hypertension patient? A patient came to you with chronic hypertension. And how will you examine? We will take history, as we said, our history in the organ on aphidism 83 to 104. We will take his symptoms and also symptoms from the associates and we'll examine him, we'll write the signs, we'll take his family history, personal history, his work history, his drug history and everything. Then we'll write some investigation for him because without investigation, you should not prescribe for a long-standing hypertension patient. Why? Because this patient may have already some target organ damage. You don't know. The patient only came to you, oh sir, I have hypertension, can you treat me? And you started treating him. No, <clears throat> you start treating, but you will have to assess by this time already how much damage has occurred in his organ systems. He may have kidney problem, he may have heart problem, he may have eye problem, who knows? So you will have, have to investigate. First thing you do, urine for routine examination. Why? By urine, you can diagnose so many things. You may find there is blood, hematuria. You may find there is protein, albumin, <coughs> and sugar. By protein, more protein, and protein cast, you can diagnose that he may have glomerular nephritis, kidney damage. By sugar, you may diagnose that he has diabetes as well. So only by urine examination, you can diagnose many things. Then you send for him blood urea and creatine in and serum electrolytes to, to evaluate his kidney because he's having long-standing long hypertension and he may have an inadequate treatment. So you think that he may have some kidney damage, maybe no symptoms, but some damage already occurred. So you must know how much damage has occurred. That's why you have to write Okay, blood urea, you may not try to write serum creatinine and serum electrolytes to evaluate the kidney. Then you write for him blood sugar, maybe random blood sugar only. Why? To see maybe he has diabetes, he knows, does not know. There are so many patients, they come to hospital, he, he never knows that he has diabetes. Only by simple urine test, we know that he has diabetes. And when we find sugar, in his urine, then we send him also for blood sugar, RBS or FBS. Then also we check for his lipid profile. This is called lipid profile. What are the lipid profile? Total cholesterol, then low density, this is called low cholesterol, this is high density cholesterol, and their triglycerides. If triglycerides, say it is 150, you may find he has 500 or more than 500. Many percent we find. He has more than 500. It means his blood seems to be like ghee, oily, oily blood. 
so much triglyceride fat in his blood. He may have very high cholesterol. So while you treat the patient for the first time, you will have to make a baseline investigation. So lipid profile. Then also, he may have heart pain or not. You write one ECG also as well. Why? Because by ECG, you can diagnose whether he has hypertrophy of the heart or maybe some old infarction. He may, you see, I told in the in the diabetic lecture that many diabetic patients have silent heart attack. He never knows that he had a heart attack, but he had. So if you do an ECG, this will show that he has all coronary infarct and he has ventricular hypertrophy, hypertrophy of the heart. So you know that already his hypertension has caused an organ damage, target organ damage. These are routine tests. You should write this test for all persons of hypertension who came to you with a long-standing history of hypertension. But some patient, not all, some patient also you should do this thing. Why? If we find that in the ECG, there is hypertrophy of the heart, so you write one chest X-ray also to see if he has cardiomegaly. Chest X-ray will show he has a bigger heart. So this is called cardiomegaly. And if there is heart failure also, you don't know. Or coarctation of aorta. This coarctation of aorta also you can you can see in, in, in the picture. The aorta shadow, you can see there is constriction. So if you suspect there is some heart damage, they can you write one chest X also. And also you do some echocardiography. Why? If you find ECG, ECG cannot say the heart muscle abnormality. This will say only if there is strain or if there is uh, angina pectoris, if there is old myocardial infarction, if there is hypertrophy. But cardiac muscle movements, it's, it's uh, in this is called valves condition, you cannot know with ECG. For this, you know, you want to know echocardiography. So echocardiography to detect presence of cardiac muscle abnormality and valvular abnormality. And also, if you suspect that he has renal disease, kidney disease, because you find serum creatinine more, serum electrolytes more, also you write one ultrasonography to see about his kidney. You find kidney became contracted, smaller. In the abdominal ultrasonography, will show kidney became contracted, smaller. They will write features of chronic kidney disease. And if you think that he has renal artery stenosis because you find bruits, abnormal sound by your stethoscope on the renal area, then you will have to write for renal angiography. Of course, we homeopath, we should not write renal angiography. This is for specialist. If I find there is a bruit on the renal area, it is better to send him to a kidney specialist. Let him evaluate the case. You may take it afterwards, but the evaluation may be better done by a nephrologist. That's this thing I told you. Ultrasonography, okay, you can write. Even ECG better, you, do, you don't write. You can write uh, echocardiography, you better you don't write. You write ECG, chest X-ray, and ultrasonography, enough. Now, regarding management, the patient of a hypertension, how can I manage? So there must be some target that because his parameter is hypertension. So we must have a parameter, a target of blood pressure. The also optimum blood pressure for reduction for major vascular complication is 139 and 83. It should be below 140 systolic and 85 diastolic. That should be our target. But if the patient is diabetic, the target should be lower because diabetic patient actually they want 
120 and this is this is 80. So you can see this is a 140. This is about about 80. This is your target. Now you you treat him by conventional medicine by the allopathic doctor or you by homeopathic or maybe one uh, Ayurvedic doctor, he treats by his own way. Uh, uh, United doctor treats his own way. Anyone will treat, but his target must be to lower the blood pressure. You treated the patient, patient said, okay, I am now feeling better. But you find his blood pressure is 180 and uh, in the uh, diastolic is 110. No, he's, he's still in danger. So it must be by symptoms and signs, objective and subjective. Subjectively, he will say, yes, I am feeling better. I have no headache now. But also his blood pressure must be in safe level, safe level. Now they say, even in conventional medicine, they say, you never can treat adequately all patients of hypertension. Why? Because well, they said there is a rule of halves. What is this? They say, well, of all the hypertensive patients in the world, only half are diagnosed. Because many patients will not come to doctors. Even if they come to doctors, doctor will not diagnose his hypertension. Maybe he will treat him by some symptoms only. So only half of the hypertensive patients are diagnosed properly. Then of this half, only half of this go for treatment. What? Say 100 patients are diagnosed, there are 100 patients. 50 patients diagnosed, 50 percent remains without diagnosis. And out of 50, only 25 will go for treatment. And 25 will not take treatment. He will disregard, he will neglect. And of this 25 again, only half of this patient have blood pressure well control. Maybe some patient will take tablet today, maybe one week, there is no tablet. Sometimes he will take, sometimes he will not take. So though he is under treatment, but his blood pressure is not well controlled. So this is called rule of halves. Of all patients, half only diagnosed, half only go for treatment, and half only gets blood pressure control. But the thing is that if a person has long-standing blood pressure, he cannot neglect treatment. Otherwise, he will have all this target organ damage. His kidney failure and maybe stroke and this and that. Now, there are non-drug therapy. Apart from medicinal treatment, you can give him some advice to change his lifestyle. And he may have good result of hypertension. The appropriate lifestyle, what appropriate lifestyle? If the patient has, say for example, he has obesity, he's very fat. So you give him advice about his diet so that he can lessen the diet. How much? We say, if you want to reduce your weight, you take two thirds of calorie you take normally. In our country, the male person has 2,100 calorie normal diet. We take 2,100 calorie. So if you want to reduce the weight, you take two third means you take 1,400 calorie only, 700 no. If you take three breads at night, you take only two bread. So this is about diet and ask him to reduce or leave alcohol because alcohol taking aggravates blood pressure. Then ask him to restrict his salt intake. Some people are taking salt like anything, though he has blood pressure. So he must restrict his salt intake. And he must have regular physical exercise because a person is having sedentary life taking more food and sleeping only, he will have more cholesterol, more lipids, and he will have more atherosclerosis. So ask him to go for regular physical exercise. How much? 
we already discussed discussed in the last lecture what is medical exercise medical exercise is 40 minutes daily for 5 days in a week and the exercise must be that that you will sweat you will perspire or your pulse rate will be 50% more than from beginning this is called medical exercise so you tell him to to do it eating more fruits and vegetables so he will have he will have more vitamins antioxidants and also less calorie so this measures this is called diet and regimen or lifestyle measure will contribute to lower his blood pressure and also ask him to quit smoking i have a patient now i have he has he had two eyes stenting then <laughs> on the third attack he has now cabg heart operation coronary bypass grafting and this guy still takes half packet cigarette daily i ask you how much you don't know only only 10 to 12 you see as you are not afraid of dying he said what can i do i try but i cannot so <laughs> so if you, but this is our duty to ask the patient to quit smoking he asked me that do you have any medication to quit smoking i think yes i have i have medication and also i have acupressure and acupuncture to quit smoking then he said no 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 i don't want to quit smoking why because he said that this is a good thing it gives me relief and it gives me mental happiness or something like this so i can reduce it but i cannot quit totally anyway this is our duty to tell him and to ask him to take whale fish you know fish whale is better for our heart and, and and cholesterol and the diet low in saturated fat saturated fat should not you should not take ghee makhan something like this so these are the lifestyle measure as we advise our diabetic patient or we also advise our hypertensive patient to follow this lifestyle say weight reduction as i said aerobic exercise you know this is called aerobic exercise and another is called anaerobic exercise what is this aerobic exercise is like walking walking swimming running jogging these are aerobic exercise anaerobic is this like uh, dumbbell and this uh, weight lifting something like this these are called anaerobic exercise so we don't ask patient to go for anaerobic exercise simple aerobic exercise walking jogging swimming enough and to ask him to reduce sugar intake salt intake of course and to take more vegetables and fruits low fat and fat free food stopping smoking and reducing stress relaxation therapy so you see you can also learn meditation this is a good thing to reduce your stress some people say oh i don't like meditation and meditation is only it is not very very uh, scientific or it does not give actually the effect who is the claim actually no if you learn meditation and if you practice meditation you will find that it reduces stress yes so if a person he needs reducing his stress for his blood pressure and something like this he may also go to learn meditation and relax himself if you can relax your blood vessels will be relaxed and there will be no tension in the blood vessel and you will find that your blood pressure will reduce also to some extent at least so these are all preventive measures or non drug therapy let us come to treatment medicinal treatment i did not i don't want to discuss here the allopathic medication for blood pressure because uh because i think these are the drugs to be prescribed by allopath only if i discuss here if i teach here maybe some people will learn and he will give his patient 
uh, these tablets. That's why willingly I thought that better I don't discuss it here. So let us discuss homeopathic management. How can we treat a patient of blood pressure with homeopathy? So I, I should say you that there is no there is no categorical list of drugs that you can you can apply in a patient of hypertension. So it is by the same way what Hardiman said for a chronic disease, you will have to take elaborate history, you will have to sort out his symptoms, and you will he you will make an analysis of totality of symptoms and find out a most suitable remedy and give him. This is as a chronic disease, not for acute symptom. He may have acute symptom. For acute symptom, you can give acute medicine. But when his acute symptoms will be relieved, then you give him his constitutional medicine. Otherwise, you cannot relieve his hypertension, hyperlipidemia, atherosclerosis, uh, coronary blockage, cardiac hypertension. It needs a constitutional medicine, not by small medicine, this or that, or, or some definitive medicine. No, there is no definitive medicine to treat hypertension. You will have to go for the old way. So let us discuss a little bit. We will have to, because this is a chronic disease, and all chronic disease, as Hahnemann said, has miasmatic component. Same in hypertension also. In hypertension, patient has psoric component, psychotic component, and syphilitic component. What are the psoric components? Acute episode of hypertension due to anxiety, anger, frustration is psoric in nature. If a person has anxiety, so much anxiety, and he's very angry, he's very uh, dominating, and he's frustrated, always is said, these are psoric components, psoric in nature. And even, and then a factoris, the patient says, if I, if I ascend stairs, if I go steps of the of stairs, I get pain here. If there is myocardial infarction, this is something else. But only and then a factoris without myocardial, myocardial infarction also belong to Sora. So if this guy, as this thing in his history, this is more prominent, then you go for antisoric remedies. But this soric component leads to psychosis. When a patient gets hypertension for a longer time, he will develop chronic hypertension, hyperlipidemia, atherosclerosis, coronary artery blockage, cardiac hypertrophy, and this all belongs to psychosis. His heart became big. There is deposition in the coronary vessel. There is atheroma, tumor formation inside the uh, artery. And there is hyperlipidemia, more fat. These are psychotic components. And the patient, hypertension with myocardial infarction. He had cardiac damage, myocardial infarction. He has heart failure. He has stroke, thrombosis, cerebral thrombosis and cerebral hemorrhage. He has an renal failure. His kidney becomes small, damaged. He has retinopathy. He has he is blind or blurring of vision. These belong to civility component. So you see, you can find psoric component, psychotic component, and civility component in a patient of hypertension. And you can treat, you can go for similar treatment. Now, if he comes with some acute episodes, the patient of hypertension, you are treating him. Sometimes he came with so much, so much headache, so much palpitation, so much pain. So these are acute episodes. And you will have to stop the chronic medicine and give him acute medicine to conquer this chronic, uh, this acute symptoms. So for management of acute episodes, the selection of some acute remedies with similarity to acute episodes of hypertension. Maybe this is belladonna, maybe this is, say, as a 
spizelia according to his symptoms maybe he, he, he needs some cactus or maybe he needs some say for example uh, 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 uh even belladonna belladonna even bryonia so according to his acute symptom you give him acute medicine when this symptom settled you go for your chronic medicine again so this is the way you will have to treat him for a longer time you cannot expect that you can treat and cure a case of hypertension within few months it will take longer time and you'll have to be expert in combating his complications if he has renal complication if he has eye complication you'll have to know how to treat it so if a patient of simple hypertension this is easier but a patient of hypertension with target organ damage this is not so easy this is very tough and sometimes sometimes you will have to take help of hospital also if he has kidney damage if he has heart attack you will have to take hospital help at that time you cannot keep the patient with you if a patient develops heart attack you will have to send him to hospital also <coughs> this patient you see must be considered to be suffering from a chronic myelomatic disorder and thus be treated as a manifestation of chronic disease a detailed history must be taken as per direction of hanimen by the forism 32104 from the anamnesis a totality of symptoms will be sorted out with due myelomatic consideration there is soric dominance or psychotic dominance or civilitic dominance a constitutional medicine will be selected keeping aphorism 153 in sorting appropriate symptoms and a selected dvd must be given in appropriate potency and dose if you prescribe 50 millisimal potency then you start from m1 or m2 but if you prescribe centesimal potency then there is separate rule how to select centesimal potency for a patient if the patient is very old if the patient is younger if the case is very chronic if there is pathological lesion if there is mental symptoms more so according to this you will have to select your potency but for 50 millisimal potency hanimen has made it very easy for us you start from say you want to you want to give him like what you say for example start from m1 or m2 and give him accordingly then after an appropriate weighting you give second precision with due consideration so in that way you will have to progress and follow up the patient and at the same time as i said before you will have to advise for him diet and regimen with suitable lifestyle modification because these are all maintaining cause of the disease hanimen said for a disease there are three types of causes one is called he said fundamental cause another is exciting cause another is maintaining cause fundamental cause is myelomatic cause chronic myelomatic cause exciting cause are like say you went to heat you went to uh, damp weather or something like this so these are these are exciting cause and maintaining cause is this if a person has di- uh, hypertension he is taking too much salt in his diet so this is a maintaining cause so you have to reduce this one or a person has hypertension he is very fat he is not taking any exercise so this becomes a maintaining cause so you have to remove this maintaining cause you will have to guide the patient to do it like this now i give you as i said it is very difficult to give you a list of medicine that you will apply this for hypertension no i want to for your patient anything may come but i can give you some hints from some rubrics say a patient may have fear of heart disease patient say that i i am afraid of i am afraid of death i am afraid of disease if you ask him what disease some will say i i fear cancer some say i fear 
death from heart disease. So you can take the rubric like this. That these are an, these are like an example only. Then fear of death of heart symptom during when he has palpitation, he fears death that he will die. Then he may have delusion that he may have heart disease. Actually, he has only only moderate heart disease, but he has delusion that he has severe heart disease and he will die. Then you can see in the general chapter, hypertension has, these are medicines. These are little bit more commonly used. Say, Beretia carb. I find in my case, Beretia carb often uh, gets indicated if there is more atherosclerosis. Even George Vidolkas has suggested the Beretia carb often used in case of atherosclerosis, Beretia carb, Beretia mure. Also, Oramet. These are, this Oramet is anti Then, Conium also. Lachesis, you find in many patients, you find symptoms of lachesis. Lyco, very, very common. Medo, you find this in psychotic component, you find many medo. In Nax, you find in so many sorry components, he has Nax like symptoms. Plumba metallicum, you find more in chronic disease, which affects the kidneys, brain like this. In such cases, you find plumba metallicum. The patient will have constipation with, with lumpy stool, patient will have uh, uh, he has colic in his lower abdomen. He may have uh, atherosclerosis in the brain, in, 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 in heart. In such case, sometimes plumb metallicum comes uh, as a good indication. Also, Sikelicor. Sikelicor has much uh, problem in the vessel wall. So, also Silesia. Silesia also a disability medicine, and it may come in case of hypertension. Sulfur, of course, now and then it, it may come as a, as a uh, inter, interconnecting medicine or independent medicine. Also, Tuza may come. So th these are just list of medicine. May come, may not come, but these are, com these are common medicine, you can say. Now for atherosclerosis also, there are some medicines in the repertory. If you find a patient has atherosclerosis, more, he has atherosclerosis in the, in, in the carotid artery, atherosclerosis in the heart, then there are some medicine. Arsayod, Oramed, Veretagarib is very important, very, very important. Kelkirekar, Glonoin, Kelayoid, Plumba Metallicum, also very important in, in chronic cases. Sikelicot, Tebekam, patient having uh, smoking habit more, and headache, tebecam, benedium. Also, if your patient has paralysis due to apoplexy, he has hemorrhage in the brain and one side paralysis. You find also many medicine, or a mure, veretag, you see veretagarb always come, veretagarb, costicam, crotal asphoridias. If there is a right-sided problem and hemorrhage, and if he has history of, say, for example, uh, jaundice, and he has uh, lachesis-like symptoms, you may find crotal asphoridia. Gelsimia also comes. Opium in apoplexy, it's a good medicine. Phosphorus, again, plumba metallicum. Vipera, it is a snake medicine and often, often used in apoplexy. Zinca metallicum, he has neurological problem. Then general paralysis one side with aphasia. He has aphasia, he cannot talk. By paralysis, he lost his talking. Also you find, you see, both drops, it is also snake medicine. Also it is used in, in such case often. Both drops, cantharis, sancris concortix. This medicine is a new medicine developed by Kent. You can find in his new remedies, xenopodium, Then you find some patient comes with acute symptom. He had pain, pulsating pain. I did not write the 
name of medicine because there are so many. Then flashes of heat. He said, I have flashes of heat. Then apoplexy. If the patient has a brain hemorrhage, cerebral hemorrhage, apoplexy. You can find these are the these are the medicines more used. And again, you see veritacar, coculus indica, crotella solidus, glonoin, nux of income, opium, plumbum metallicum, then cerebral hemorrhage, anacardium arnica, arsenic, oramet, veritacar, botrops, bryonia calcarea, coculus, crotella solidus. In cerebral hemorrhage, if there is Symptom of scrotellus, it's a good medicine. Gelsemium, glonine, lachesis always uh, helps you if there is uh, one-sided paralysis and, and other chronic symptoms. Lyco also comes, nax, opium, etc. With retinal hemorrhage, sometimes patient comes with retinal hemorrhage. There is in the repertory, you find there are lists of medicine. Then palpitation of the heart during headache. He has headache with palpitation of the heart, and he has hypertension. There are medicines you can see. Chest pain, heart exertion aggravated. He has chest pain when he moves, it aggravates. Then hypertrophy of the heart accompanied by hypertension. Back pain. Sometimes the patient says, hypertensive patient you find have more common complaint that pain in the in the in the neck. This is important. If a Hypertensive patient says, I have pain in the neck. You think that his blood pressure has, has uh, uh, risen. And you find also here are some medicines. Pain, cervical lesion, extending to head. Carbobase, semi-sifuga is a good medicine for, for, for neck pain. Ferramia, telecom, gelsemium, pulsatilla, salicia. These are, only, these are only giving you some hints that how you go for repertory rubric to take help and to get an idea about, about some medicines. But the ultimate advice is to treat a case of hypertension. If it is very severe hypertension, malignant hypertension, it is better to send him to hospital. If it is chronic hypertension, with target organ damage, target organ damage, with renal failure, with hypertrophy of the heart, and these are dead. If you think that you are not experienced enough, better you don't take. Better you don't take, because maybe you, you cannot treat him well. But if without target organ damage, simple hypertension, and the patient is, uh, he follows your, your advice well, because some patient you find, he does not manage his lifestyle. He, he, he does not agree to you. No, no, I will not quit a cigarette or this or that. I will not do exercise. So it is better not to take this patient. When I take some patient of hypertension, I give him some, some condition, some sort that you will have to do, do, do like this. If he agrees, okay. If he does not agree, then I say that this person belongs to you. I will give my medicine. Maybe it will not act well because there are maintaining causes which you don't want to uh, agree with me. So ultimately you find that when the patient has some problem, you can make some counseling, he agrees. Usually he agrees. And there is no royal road to treat hypertension. There is no easy road to treat how to treat hypertension. It is said like all chronic diseases. You'll have to take the history you will have to find a constitutional medicine and give him in appropriate doses and then make follow-up in the second prescription, third prescription. In this way, you go on treating him. So only this is the way, how can you, how can you treat a case of hypertension? Now, one hint I give you. If you find a patient has very high uncontrolled hypertension and you have taken you have taken this case for treatment. So he will he is taking the hypertensive tablet for a long time. It is better not to stop the medicine at all from the beginning. Then maybe the patient will develop malignant hypertension. What I do, my practice, 
I tell him, you make it half. When you take two tablets in the morning and evening, you take only one. If you take daily one, you make it one by uh, alternate day. And I, I start my medication. If I find that he's getting better, then I tell him to reduce his tablet twice in a week. In this way only, I withdraw his medicine. I try to withdraw. But if you say, no, I will stop the medicine right from the beginning, then maybe you lose the patient because his con condition is very chronic. And since long time, he's, take, he's dependent on this tablet. So if you withdraw it, then maybe he will develop malignant hypertension, he will develop stroke and so many things. And they will ultimately blame you. So take care when you treat a case of hypertension. I think this is enough today. <laughs> so next day, I hope we'll give the Bengali version of the lecture. And those who followed this lecture, little, little bit uh, not so good, so I invite him to follow our Bengali lecture and sure he will he will enjoy it better. So this much today I am I am uh, transferring the microphone to Dr. Anwar Patwari. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, for your uh, um, excellent discussion. Jara shun chen, doshuk, apnara chayile aaskir alo chunna du pore. Apna dher jadir prushnu aache, apnara hand raise kulle, apna dher ke naam gulo goshna kutte shubhi da habe, apnara jara prushnu kutte chen, apna dher hand raise kulle, apna dher ke ake ake prushnu kura chunno shujub kure dhu, inshallah. Uh, <laughs> 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 সেটা হচ্ছে যে উপরে 170 নিচে 60 এই ধরনের রোগীর ক্ষেত্রে কি করা যায় উপরে 170 সিস্টোলিক আর ডায়াস্টোলিক মানে জি স্যার হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ এটা যে গতকাল it needs treatment. ठीक है सर? इतना हाइपरटेंशन है क्या बोले? Isolated systolic hypertension. Okay, thank you. जी, दोनों बात नसुल्ला रशिदी के। आर कारों को न प्रश्न आ चाहे? एक हंड्रेड जी सर, दोनों। अच्छा अभी बहुत दिन एर दूसरा प्रश्नों सिलो। अभी एक तो बोल सिलाम जे अमर एक तो सुविधा हलो। अमर जेहद अभी MBBS is a classmate, a Bishal Bishal professor. So, subject is a guy, a heart, a endocrine, so, blind, a summer cook, cook, and three bond of jigidos. And I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to Question for Chilean, even a soft a lecture, a soft a book, Jane, Motamon Kuran Karone, Kanon One Kota Taktebare, Kunota Judami Napari, Tailami, a prosnota de Nebo, Evangamo Jubalaman on a Boroboro, Dustor has a Zaraboro proposal, Tadar Castigami, it a genuine. The Jemon, actor Prosno got to the Jan Bolsilen, the Tar Batfasa Silo, malignant hypertension. The Kotogeni. Simul the Gabu the Kyu Prosnogosilis. Blood pressure, Sistolisilo, Dusho Solis, Nisisil Exo Bis. For a cigarette, Nakizani Kese, Tapo the Kagology of Blood Pressure Exome, come a normal regacy. Eta Exome, unusual lecta gota, it a horkunu caronai. 
একজন সিগারেট ব্লাড প্রেসার এত বেশি হয়ে সিগারেট হয়ে কমে গেছে দিস ইজ কোয়াইট আনজুয়াল এটা অন্য কোনো কারণ হইতে পারে বা যে ব্লাড প্রেসার আগে দেখছেন বা পরে দেখছেন তাদের মেশিনে ত্রুটি হতে পারে তাদের দেখায় ত্রুটি হতে পারে কিন্তু এর কোনো এটাকে বলে প্লসিবল একটা কথাকে বলে বায়োলজিক্যাল প্লসিবল পি এল এ ইউ এস আই বি এল ই প্লসিবল প্লসিবল কথার মানে কি এটা হলো বায়োলজিক্যালি এক্সপ্লেনেবল যে আপনি একটা কথা বললেন যে আমি রেনাল ফেলের রোগী একদম তার জি এফ আর হচ্ছে টু আমি ভালো করে ফেলছি কেউ যদি দাবি করে এটাকে বলে ইট ইজ নট প্লসিবল ইট ইজ নট মেডিক্যালি প্লসিবল মানে এটাকে বায়োলজিক্যালি এক্সপ্লেনেবল না তো কাজে এটা মিথ্যা হইতে পারে মৃত্যু ধরা হয় তো এই জন্য যেটা বললো যে ব্লাড প্রেসার অনেক বেড়ে গেছিল সিগারেট খাওয়ার পরে কমে গেছে আমাদের সরকার কলেজ খুব ব্রিলিয়েন্ট ছাত্র উনি একটা প্রশ্ন আমি আনসার দিয়েছিলাম সেটা একটু কারেকশন দিচ্ছি আমি আপনি বলছিলেন যে ব্লাড প্রেসার আমরা দুই হাতে মাপবো কিনা বা ডান হাতে যদি বেশি হয় মাম হাতে বেশি তাহলে কি করা অ্যাকচুয়ালি যদি আপনি প্রথমবার ব্লাড প্রেসার কারো মাপেন প্রথমবার আর মাপেন নেই কখন আপনি তার দুই হাতে মাপা উচিত কেন আমাদের কিছু আর্টারির মধ্যে বৈকল্য থাকতে পারে ডান দিকে বাম দিকে থাকে অ্যানাটমিক্যাল বৈকল্য এর ফলে কি বৈকল্য থাকতে পারে মনে করেন একদিকে এখানে একটু কনস্ট্রিকশন আছে আর্টারিটা চিকন কনস্ট্রিক্টেড আছে ওই দিকে ব্লাড প্রেসার কম হবে আর যেটা নর্মাল ওই দিকে বেশি হবে তো কথা হলো বিশেষজ্ঞের কথা যে যদি দুই দিকে দুইটা পাওয়া যায় তাহলে যেটা বেশি এইটি এইটি ধরতে হবে যেটা কম এটি হলো এটি হলো অ্যাবনর্মাল এটা না যেটা বেশি সেটি হলো তার ঠিক ব্লাড প্রেশার ঠিক আছে এই দুইটা কোয়েশ্চন না স্যার আজকে দিলাম আচ্ছা কে জানি বলবেন ডক্টর পিচুস বলেন হ্যাঁ বলেন স্পিরিট বুঝেন না আপনি বোঝা গেল লেকচার মাঝে তর্ক নাই আপনি প্রশ্ন করবেন আমি আনসার নিয়ে আসবো আপনার জন্য সেটা আপনার করতে পারে না করতে পারে কিন্তু এইটি আনসার আপনি এখন আপনার আপনি মনে রাখতে পারেন কোনো সমস্যা নেই জায়গা নাই না আর বলবেন না কথা বলবেন না আপনারটা শেষ কারণ আমি বললাম না এই জিনিসটা আমি একদম স্পেশালিস্ট কাছ স্পেশালিস্টের কাছ থেকে একদম উনি বড় কার্ডিওলজিস্ট ওনার কাছ থেকে নিয়ে আসছি কথাটা এই যে সেটাই আপনাকে বললাম আচ্ছা আর কেউ বলেন হেরিটেজিক্যালি <laughs> uh you continue that uh, lecture the hereditary hereditary who bears the hkn hypertension they have uh, some lifestyle irregular lifestyle and uh, unnecessary food habit uh, <coughs> this is the main uh, there are many causes you, you may explain about it sir sir I get to know, sir, you, that uh, my, I am already uh, hereditically uh, uh, hypertension patient as my father was hypertension and he was struck and fall down uh, on the ground and at last he, after uh, 10 days, he died in the hospital. I have, sir, uh, my pressure, blood pressure is continue uh, one 20 to 130 
Uh, no, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, yes, sir. One uh, twenty to one thirty and uh, seventy nine to eighty one. Uh, eighty one. Eighty one. Eighty one. It is running. I have experienced some, and I have, uh, <laughs> sir, a, 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 a prostate in lads. So, as the my information of doctor, I have expressed then electric doctor. He what is your question? Me. Please say. This, what is your question? What is your question? Yes, sir. So he suggests me that they taken uh, the uh, uh, medicine. The losadil twenty one twenty uh, losadil uh, twenty five by twelve point five. I am taking continue, but uh, I did not take is continue. Sometime I take it. My questions are: hereditarily the uh, hypertension patient, the you uh, you uh, advise to meditation. Uh, what is the, when the on a hot time is the best time to taking medicine, and what the situation will the meditation, sir? Uh, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you for your long comments and uh, question. This is nice question. Uh, actually, you see, the allopathic medication has some time, some medicine to be taken before meal, some medicine to be taken after meal, some it is called HS. HS means at night. Some CM CM means in the morning. So medicine you have to take in its prescribed time. When the doctor will say that you take this time. For meditation, it depends. You know what I do. I, I personally do. Uh, I I I find it is better in the morning or at night while you have finished all the work before sleep. You can do it or in the morning. These are uh, for me. These are the best time. But some people can take in the evening after coming from the office. He's, he has taken his tea and he's relaxed. He can take. So for meditation, it depends on the person. When he can get time, he can go for meditation. But it is better if you take at night. You may have good sleep, and you remove all your anxiety what came to your mind in the daytime. Or if you take in the morning, it may give you more vigorous. Uh, mental strength to take the challenge of the day. So it depends. And for for your treatment, as I said, the tablet to be taken as the physician says. You don't con uh, mix with meditation type. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for good advice, sir. The by meditation uh, position, key, uh, sitting or some uh, lie down, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, see, uh, there are many types of meditation. In Bangladesh, there are two types. One is Silva meditation. Silva is doing by Mr. Uh, Abul Kalam Farooq. He's my, he's my patient also. He takes some medicine from me. And another is quantum meditation by Maharaj uh, Guruji. He's uh, yes. teaching this uh, quantum meditation. So, uh, and, and they, uh, another one I know, this is called Qigong meditation from China. This is the best one. So, <laughs> you can you can do meditation in many posture. In sitting, there are meditation. You can take lying down. Even when you are standing, you can take also. Even when you are running, you can do meditation too. So it, it depends. You can choose sitting. Sitting is better. You sit like this, Paddashan, and do your meditation. It is better. Also, if you think at night while you are going to sleep, okay, in lying down position, you can go for meditation and get a very good sleep. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Very Thank you, sir. Very uh, good advice. I bless you to, uh, for, uh, to Allah for your long life, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Our caro kono prashno dekhte bache na. Jodi prashno kote sir hand raise kulle, amar jono naam prashna kora da shubida. Jee, doctor shubuz mia. Apna prashno di korbe. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Waalaikum salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
uh, hope you all are well by the grace of Almighty Allah. I'm very pleased to see my favorite teacher, Dr. Sheikh Farooq Ilahi sir here. And I'm blessed to uh, get his answer today once again. Uh, today I have no question, but uh, I am, um, I have to, I have to say something uh, about uh, these two classes. Uh, I am sorry because uh, I can't attend due time last two classes. That's why I don't know uh, my respective uh, teacher whether he discuss about uh, portal hypertension and uh,